Hello and welcome again to another video on cryptography. So now we're going to talk about uh, hash functions and hash functions are going to be also a very important uh, construct of fact about cryptography. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a general idea on what hash functions are. I'm not going to talk about a specific hash functions and how we actually compute with those things. I'm just going to give you a general overview and why they are important. So let's talk about uh, what a hash function is. So a hash function is a map, or is just think about it this way: you give it an input and you get an output that transforms data of arbitrary size into a fixed size. Now, there's something here that is important: is a hash function doesn't have any other input. You just give it uh, some data and it gives you something of a fixed size. So, so what do I mean by that? So let's say you have data, let's say it's in the sense of messages or files, etc of any size, so for example, two megabytes, 150 megabytes, or even it could be gigabytes. What a hash function that is gonna transform that data into something that we call the digest or the hash. The hash is a fixed size. So for example, in this particular picture that I'm putting over there, it's just 160 bits. So it takes any size of 200, 150 megabytes or any size, two gigabytes, and all of those will become 860 bits and that's going to be like a hash or a digest so think about it as a hash function as a fingerprint of whatever data you are trying to to encode now so let's look at a particular example so let's say the data is uh, this phrase that i have here it's called pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs uh, that if you consider that um, as a collection of uh, characters and you encode them using the ASCII code, you will get 39 bytes, which is the same as 212 bits. So if I want to apply a hash function to it, I'm going to transform it into a fixed size. And what you can see over there is it was transformed into 160 bits. Now, uh, those uh, numbers and letters there are the hexadecimal representation of the 160 bits but it's just a number. So I can easily just put the number there. The only reason I didn't put it in decimal is because it's gonna take a longer uh, space to put it there. So that's why I chose the hexadecimal. It's a little bit uh, easier to put it there. So, so even though I have 35, 39 bytes, I can transform that into 160 bits, which is like kind of like a, the fingerprint of that particular message that you see there. Now you can also do for all sorts of things. So for example, I have a picture there, which is on on the computer will take about 5 million bytes, which is about 5.1 megabytes. Uh, so that picture, you can also hash it or compute the fingerprint of that particular picture. And so you apply the hash function and then you get that 160 bits, which is again written in hexadecimal. Uh, the only reason for that again is because I want to put it in a shorter form. Now, when I say the hash function, I don't really mean there is only one hash function. There are many uh, types of hash functions that will do this for you. Some of them will give you 160 bits, some others will give you 128 bits, and some others will go uh, up to 112 bits. And we will see those and how we compute with those uh, later. So for now, we're just going to look at this just general ideas of what hash functions are. So as I mentioned earlier, just think as a hash function that can be viewed as a fingerprint of the message or also the file that you're trying to hash. And that hash or that fingerprint is thought as a unique representation of that message. Now, you might wonder why are hash functions important? Why do we care about computing or making a file which is very big or a message or whatever into something that is smaller? So there are a few applications of that. The first one is uh, the digital signatures. As you remember, if you watch the videos on digital signature, the last one that was the digital signature algorithm uh, needed the use of a hash function. And that's why that's important. And hash functions are widely used in digital signatures. They are also used in message authentication code or MAX, what they're also called like that, which is another way to uh, make sure that the person who sends that file or that message is actually the person who is sending it. So it's another way, kind of like the digital signature, but it's not really a digital signature. 
and also they are used for storing password now uh, storing password for hash functions uh, it's kind of tricky and you should be uh, very careful about that uh, but we'll talk about that later so these are used for this uh, cryptographic applications and uh, more than that now one thing I want to discuss before I actually finish the video is how do you gonna use uh, this uh, hash function for uh, digital signatures so the basic protocol so again the same situation we have always we have Alice and Bob and Bob is the person or entity that wants to send a message uh, using that with a signature so he wants to sign that message so let's suppose that uh, we have the same situation that we have before we have a public key which is known to everyone so now Alice knows that and everyone knows that so suppose that public key is published in some server or or your web page or or whatever and then you have your private key which is uh, only no Bob's knows about it and Bob's will take the private key to sign messages so it is important that uh, Bob keeps that private key uh, secret now what are the public key and the private key for the moment uh, think about them as numbers so that they're just numbers basically and Bob's wants to sign the message M so M could be a file or it could be just a sentence in English or whatever it is that is the data now what Bob is gonna do uh, before he actually goes into the process of just signing that message he is gonna apply a hash function to that message that's what I mean by H of M so I compute uh, the hash of that message which is gonna give me a fingerprint of let's say 160 bits it doesn't have to be 160 bits but let's just for the example let's say this 160 bits and I call that hash I'm gonna call it Z now after that what I do is I'm gonna use a signature algorithm what algorithm uh, this is a very general approach just imagine that is some kind of algorithm that takes as an input the hash and also the private key and that's gonna give you back a number or a pair of numbers depending on what the signature algorithm is so you compute a signature let's call it in this case case s now once you, uh, Bob has done that and of course Bob is the only one who can do the signature because he is the one in possession of the private key now after that uh, he will produce a package or in this case a pair of uh, numbers which will be the uh, message M and the signature S so that is the uh, uh, the package that will be sent through the insecure channel so Bob will send that through Alice Alice will receive that uh, package which is M and S M is the message S is the signature and now what Alice has to do is of course she has to verify that the signature actually correspond to that specific message so now what she's gonna do is she's gonna apply the verification algorithm uh, something that we actually did uh, when we were talking about digital signature so one Alice gets those things she is had to compute again the hash of that uh, message uh, and so you get the same number Z in this case now she's gonna use that hash and the public key and Alice knows the public key because in theory everybody knows the public key now she can assign the messages she can only verify that the messages are valid and the verification algorithm gives you true or false uh, true if the signature is valid and false if the signature signature is not valid so as you can see this is a basic protocol uh, for now it's a very abstract thing because I didn't describe what the signature algorithm does I didn't say what the verification algorithm is and I didn't even even say what the public key and the private key are so this is a very general thing I wanted to do this because I want to give you a, an actual some application that has functions are actually usable so in the next video what we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss a little bit more in detail uh, about what hash functions are what are the security requirements for hash functions and at the very end we'll actually describe some of the actual hash functions that are used which are several of them so uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video